going to start off with the CEO of racism, the dastardly dickhead himself, Robert Sarver. If you guys don't remember, Robert Sarver and um, the Phoenix Suns were being investigated for, you know, toxic workplace, misogyny, homophobia, racism. Like, this dude hit the trifecta of hatred, saying the N-word, uh, making fun of, you know, women, gay people, shit like that. Just an overall tremendous douchebag is Robert Sarver. And the news came out today that he was being fined at $10 million as well as being suspended for one year from the Suns organization, from the Suns and the Mercury organizations as well. Now, I don't know how the NBA decided on this punishment because if you think back to when Donald Sterling was going through his investigation. This guy was, you know, equal level to Robert Sarver, I'd say, just like based off of the shit we heard on audio. And he was banned for life from the NBA. Forced to give up the team, is no longer, you know, allowed to be associated with the NBA in any regard. And yet the NBA did not crack down the same level punishment with Robert Sarver, even though... Their own investigation revealed some pretty heinous So this is courtesy of Baxter Holmes. He writes, the NBA announced the punishment Tuesday, saying the investigation found that during his time with the Suns and Mercury, Sarver used the N-word at least five times, quote, when recounting the statements of others. There were also, quote, instances of inequitable conduct towards female employees. The NBA said in a statement, including sex-related comments and inappropriate comments on employees' appearances. The NBA commissioned an investigation after ESPN published a story this past November detailing allegations of racism and misogyny during Sarver's tenure as owner. While the NBA stated that Sarver, quote, co cooperated fully with the investigative process, league sources told Baxter Holmes and Woj that he was unaccepting of the idea that he deserved a one-year punishment and a $10 million fine for his behavior. The punitive process became largely acrimonious, sources said. The investigation led by a New York-based law firm, Wachtel Lipton, found that server, quote, engaged in conduct that clearly violated common workplace standards as reflected in team and league rules and policies. Obviously, Robert Sarver is a f dickhead who is not going to, you know, apologize for any of his actions. He's going to play the victim card. Uh, he can get f I really, I just like, I, just, I don't care, man. I don't care. He's a douchebag multi-billionaire, multi-millionaire owner of a sports franchise, he can get f Ultimately, that's the really, that's only the real takeaway from this situation. It's, uh, again, it's super weird that the NBA had all of this intel on him. They, the investigation included interviews with more than 320 current and former employees, as well as Sarver. It also contained more than 80,000 documents and other materials, including emails, texts, and videos. The reports were made publicly available online. The investigation found that he, on at least five occasions, repeated the N-word when recounting the statements of others, engaged in, a, oh, this is, um, we already read about this, made inappropriate comments about the physical appearance of female employees and other women, and on several occasions, engaged in inappropriate physical contact towards male employees. He engaged in demeaning and harsh treatment of employees included by yelling and cursing at them. The release noted that the investigation, quote, made no finding that Mr. Sarver's workplace conduct was motivated by racial or gender-based animus. How did it not find that? How do you... <laughs> oh my God. How do you say that this guy said the N-word multiple times? And then also come to the conclusion that this was not racially motivated or gender motivated. How I don't understand how that. I'm not. I'm not. You know, my synapses are not firing. I'm not comprehending how there is clearly racial hostility towards minorities from Robert Sarver. But the investigation is like we didn't find any accounts of that even though he is on wax saying the N-word. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver said in a statement, quote, 
Uh, the statements and conduct described in the findings of the independent investigation are troubling and disappointing. We believe the outcome is the right one, taking into account all of the facts, circumstances, and context brought to light by the comprehensive investigation of this 18-year period and our commitment to upholding proper standards in the workplace. Silver continued. I'm hopeful that the NBA community will use this opportunity to reflect on what this great game means to people everywhere and the values of equality, respect, and inclusion that it strives to represent, regardless of position, power, or intent. We all need to recognize the corrosive and hurtful impact of racially insensitive and demeaning language and behavior. On behalf of the entire NBA, I apologize to all of those impacted by the misconduct outlined in the investigator's report. We must do better. Well, Mr. Silver, Adam Silver, Commissioner Silver, you need to hand down the appropriate punishment. That's the only way that you can prove that you really do have a zero tolerance policy towards stuff like this because he is correct in saying this is Silver, mind you. Adam Silver's correct when he talks about the impact that basketball has on everybody men, women, boys, girls, old folks, young folks, black people, white people, Asian people. People from all six inhabited continents love the NBA. The NBA is a global phenomenon that is arguably the most popular sport in the world. Okay, maybe not, maybe not arguably, but is it is a global sport. Okay, it is the most global of the four major sports here in the United States. So when you see that someone in the NBA, someone who is not only just like in the NBA, but someone who is in a position of power in the NBA, not just in terms of his employees, but the league itself. When the governors meet, they vote on, you know, I don't know the intricacies of what they do, but they, they hold power. The commissioner works at the behest of the governors. He has a say in certain things. Okay? He could be the deciding vote in a revenue split, which could be potentially disastrous. I doubt that it would be because the the, uh, the players' union is, is exceptionally strong. But you already had a situation like this, and David Stern, I think at least I think it was David Stern, handled it the right way. Okay, I don't give a fuck if there was no audio evidence of Robert Sarver saying any of these things or doing any of these things. This was a comprehensive investigation. As Baxter Holmes already pointed out, 320 interviews, 80,000 documents, I think it said, 80,000 documents, 80,000 pages worth of shit. This was a comprehensive investigation where Robert Sarver was clearly behaving in an unsavory way. And what message is he going to, like, what is he going to learn from only being suspended one year for acting like a total fucking douchebag, racist, homophobic piece of shit. He's not like, this isn't a punishment. If you really want to punish these fucking freaks, these billionaire freaks who, th who can literally get away with murder, you have to hit them where it hurts. You have to hit them in their pocket. That's the only way. You have to force him to sell the team, sell all of his assets, and tell him to fuck off. He can't be associated with the NBA. We can't have shit like this going on. Okay? These types of stories are becoming more and more prominent. And I'm sure they happen in every organization to some degree. And there are so many of these cases that go that go um, unjustified. Like that where the league doesn't serve justice properly. Like there are people that feel incredible pain from the actions of people of folks like Robert Sarver, whether they're black, whether they're the head coach, whether they're secretary, whether they're someone in the front office. He has been the source of pain for countless people. And the NBA is like, we get that. But it's only going to be a $10 million fine, and it's only going to be one year away from the league. If forced to choose... Obviously, you know, you would want to have him pay out as much money as possible and be, you know, totally banned from the NBA. But, like, even if you are going to find him, like, don't find him and just excommunicate him. Get him the fuck out of here. Like, he'll be fine. I can assure you he'll be fine being away from the NBA. He's got more money than God. He'll manage. Um, 
I do want to continue with the article here, just see if anything else catches my eye. The $10 million fine is the max permitted by the NBA, and the funds will be donated to organizations addressing race and gender-based issues in and outside the workplace. This is something that the NBA does whenever they find somebody, even if it's just for, even if it's for, you know, not doing media obligations, um, not um, violating, or if it's for violating their media requirements, uh, you know, telling a referee to fuck off, they do donate those funds to charity, which is nice. But ultimately, like, the good thing that you're doing is offset by you not going far enough when it comes to making sure that these types of people don't inhabit your organization. During a suspension, Sarver may not be present at any WNBA or NBA team facility, including office, arena, or practice facility. He may not attend or participate in any activities, including games, practices, or business activities. He may not represent the Suns or Mercury in any pr public or private capacity. He may not have any involvement with the business of basketball operations with the franchises. He may not have any involvement in um, the business activities, so on and so forth. Sarver must also complete a training program focused on respect and appropriate conduct in the workplace. This is literally like not going to do anything. This guy's like 75. You're not changing his mind. The Sons and Mercury organization must also fulfill a series of requirements for workplace improvement set forth and monitored by the NBA. These include retaining an outside firm to evaluate and make recommendations with workplace or with respect to workplace training programs, policies, and procedures, um, yada, yada. Uh, conduct anonymous culture surveys, immediately report to the league uh, with any instances or allegation of misconduct for a period of three years, providing the league with regular reports related to this. Yeah, this is all just like, they just got to do a bunch of paperwork. Um, I don't know. Ultimately, it's just like the, the legal portion of this. You have to show some type of rehabilitation and, you know, shit like that. In interviews with the Wachtel Lipton lawyer, some of which were conducted in person over the phone and via video, Suns employees confirmed a range of allegations published in ESPN's November story, introduced others, and provided documents including emails. The investigation also substantiated in instances of, quote, workplace misconduct engaged in by Suns employees that were not directly related to Sarver and a lack of proper organizational policies and controls. It found instances of racial insensitivity, mistreatment of female employees, inappropriate commentary related to sex or sexual orientation, and disrespectful communications. I believe Malika Andrews also um, tweeted that one of these instances was Robert Sarver talking about him learning what a blowjob was. Again, why? Like, I, oh God, it's just, it's so weird that, you know, these freaks are in positions of power. It's it's so just. Ugh. It also found that the team's HR department was quote historically ineffective and not, <laughs> and not a trusted resource for employees who were subject to acts of improper workplace conduct. This is literally just goes for every HR department. Um, if you work in a corporation, or if you work in a place that has a human resources department, they're not your friend. Okay, they are not on your side. They are there to protect the corporation and the executives and the shareholders from, you know, basically getting into um, potential legal trouble. The HR department is not your friend, and I'm not surprised that, you know, it's the same in this in this case. The league's investigation marked the third of its kind centered on the team owners since Silver became commissioner in 2014, all three cases being led by Wachtel Lipton. Uh, I think... So there was this one. There was also, I think, the... Uh, sexual misconduct or the sexual assault allegations that were rampant throughout the Dallas Mavericks organization. Um, and maybe the third was the Donald Sterling one. I don't even remember. Oh, that was in 2014. Oh my God. So wait, Adam Silver was commissioner at the time. Uh, dude, I can't. No fucking way. Oh my God. How did he fuck this up so badly? I don't understand. Like, Adam, brother, this was a layup. This was a layup. Banning Robert Sarver for life was a layup. You had a wide open dunk. You had a wide open 360 windmill all to yourself, and you kicked it out to Draymond Green for three. Oh my God. Incredible. Incredible.